Amen. Are we blessed to have such talented and giving worship leaders? You get shaky, right? You feel that energy? You, get, you know, there's, a, there's something in it when you're hearing, this is the day the Lord has made, and they're singing it confidently, and they're singing it out, and you feel the presence of the Almighty in this place. Feel it in your being. Feel it in your soul. It makes it somewhat easier to feel it when somebody's singing it to you and you're embracing that song in your heart. It's one of those psalms that you say, yes, Lord, thank you for being with me no matter what. And no matter what I'm facing right now, things are going to be fantastic. I know it. We don't always get that feeling, do we? We love it, but sometimes it doesn't last. I was wondering, when's the last time you were really vulnerable? And I'm not talking about like Brene Brown, dare greatly be vulnerable and put yourself out there vulnerable. I'm talking about like, when were you last really vulnerable? that you felt unsteady, that you felt unsure, that you were afraid, that something happened in your life, some news you got, some thing you heard, some way you felt because of a situation that all of a sudden your world turned upside down and everything became blurry. You can't focus on anything during those times. Maybe it's the loss of a loved one. Maybe something happened to you personally. Maybe your job is on the line. Maybe you're losing your mortgage. I don't, I don't know. There's a thousand and one reasons why we personally can lose our footing. That's not to mention all of the things out there, the things that we hear on the news, or global warming, or wars, or mass shooters, or threats. There's so many things that can just make us feel like the psalmist said, that we're feeling unsteady. The psalm, psalmist cries out for God to make a level path for them to stand on. Just make it somehow that they can feel like they're standing on two feet again. Because we all know what it feels like to feel sure. But when we're feeling so uncomfortable, And everything, it's so hard to focus. We can't see right. We can't think clearly. Nothing is like we feel it should be. We don't even feel like ourselves. It feels like this giant mist is coming in and it's getting so thick. We can't breathe. Do you know what I'm talking about? That mist that's so thick that we feel it in our lungs. It's in that midst that God continues to say, God's with us. And we, as Christians, right, we're set apart. We are in the world and not of the world, right? We're professing, we love God, we know God will never leave us. We understand that no matter what we do or no matter what we think or no matter what we say, God is continuing to be with us and God will shepherd us through it. But I'm telling you, when that mist moves in, you don't feel it. You struggle. So you're stuck with this dichotomy. You're stuck with this back and forth teeter-totter that says, yes, God loves me, yes, God is with me, yes, I claim Yahweh as my Lord and my sovereign and my redeemer and my creator and will be with me. And then the other side, I don't know where you are, God, and I am completely by myself. You better come down here and show up because I don't know where I am. The psalmist struggles with the same thing. In Psalm 27, they start out with, God is my light, my salvation, my rock. Who should I be afraid of? No one. No one. I don't have to be afraid of one thing in my life. I don't have to be afraid of cancer. I don't have to be afraid of illness. I don't have to be afraid of death. I don't have to be afraid of my finances. Nothing can harm me because God is my rock. The next paragraph, 
God, help me. Where are you? What happened? It's funny how we can flip back and forth from one thing to the other so drastically. The thing that I like about this psalm, and one of the reasons that I chose it, is because it's interesting that God receives both of those arguments, receives both of those statements from the psalmist. The psalmist can stand in surety, as we're supposed to as Christians, and say, yes, God, I believe. And, the God can, and then the, the God can receive the other side that says, I'm feeling completely alone. You've abandoned me. Where in the H are you? The thing I appreciate about this psalm even more is that the psalmist has a relationship with God that is so rock solid that they can completely bear themselves before God and say whatever they need to say. We don't have that relationship with most of our friends and colleagues and family, if, we, if we're honest. We're not different from the most of the world who says, yeah, God's there, sure, but you know, you've got to face reality here. It's right here. It's right in front of you. That's real. That honesty on both counts is what's going to get us through whatever we're going through. First, it's the honesty to say, as Christians, we're no different than anybody else on the whole planet. We face the same struggles. We face the same trials. We go through the same pain. We suffer just as much. We have grief. We have fear. All of those things are true for us as they are true for the rest of the world. Because we profess that we're gods, it doesn't mean that we're immune from suffering. God never tells us that when we're Christians, we will be immune from suffering. God tells us what? That God will be with us during the suffering. The second part is the relationship building part. Now that does come on to us. Because we don't have that relationship with our friends and our peers, where we can say just about anything to them. I mean, I have a great relationship with Lois, but I'm going to tell you right now, I know when to stop. (laughs) Amen? You know Lois, right? You know when to stop. And it's like that for our closest, closest confidants. You know how to push your spouse away if you want to. You know how to push your mom away. And you know if you try too hard and you go too far and say just the wrong right thing, there's a real fear that you're going to be rejected. Honoring that power that we have as humans is important. Acknowledging that we have the power To break a human relationship is important. The thing is, sometimes we try to translate that and try to project all of that onto our relationship with God. The thing is, we can't push God away. God pursues us every single moment of every day. We can't push God away from us. That's why that message of God loves you just the way you are is so important. No matter what, right? God loves you just the way you are no matter what. Why? It's so important because we are a whole lot of ways. The way we think, the way we act, the way we hurt one another, the way we feel, the way things come out of our mouth that have no business coming out of our mouths. God loves us any way we are. There's an interesting thing that I always think about when we're talking about God that, you know, when we go into prayer with God, we don't sound much like the psalmist. We sound more like 
I don't know, like maybe we're practicing for a Sunday school prayer. We want to make sure every word is right, and we want to make sure that it's holy, and we want to make sure that it's audible and it's acceptable to God. We want to make sure our language is clean. We want to make sure that, you know, we're speaking to the reverent one. Or worse, sometimes we go to God and we just sound like scared peasants in front of a, an abusive, horrible sovereign that's going to punish us if we say the wrong thing. Yet not this psalmist. This psalmist has the courage and the relationship, the trust in the relationship with God that they can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with God and call it right out like it is, knowing that whatever the psalmist can say, God is going to receive it. It's not that we want to curse God out, although that's okay too. It's not that we want to demean God or call God things, but God sees past the things that we're saying. God sees the hurt in our lives, sees the hurt in our heart, understands where all that is coming from, and says, you know what? I'm going to love you anyway. I'm going to love you because of that. So when we finally get finished with our rant and we're screaming and cursing and we're done with that, when we collapse and we need arms to fall into, God's arms are there for us to fall into. That's the beauty of the Psalms. It allows us to do all of that. There's so much richness to learn about. I thought one last thing I wanted to talk to you about was about community, because a lot of times we talk about we can try these things in community, right? We can be really honest in community. First Baptist, we claim we're a mess. We can put it all out there, right? All our stuff is on the floor. It's okay. The thing is, we all know when to stop, right? We need to know when to stop. None of us are God. We've all been hurt by someone who didn't know when to stop. Part of loving one another in community is being able to control ourselves to know what's acceptable and what's too far. And the flip side of that is, on the receiving end, if someone says something to you that might be too far, understanding that maybe their attempt at honesty is something that you might be able to work on yourself and receive. But this is a process, right? The first step is trying to build up that relationship with God where you can know that God comes. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't usually come during the good calm times. You know how they tell you in those parenting books, never discipline your child in anger, right? <laughs> when would be a good time? You, you, you got to get the, you got to nip that in the butt, right? Right? No, no. Don't say I actually said that. <laughs> but here's the thing. Growth of relationship doesn't happen during the calm times. Growth of relationship comes when we are vulnerable and we are so unsteady and we are so unsure and we can allow that to happen knowing that God will be there and seeing Time after time after time, no matter what, our relationship with God is unshakable. No matter what, God will never leave us. No matter what, God will not stop loving us ever, no matter what. Let's pray. God, we ask this morning, we might be feeling vulnerable right now, just unsteady, unsure, worried about what's going to happen, knowing that part of us should be completely claiming that we're in your hands. The situation is already taken care of. We don't trust in chariots and horses. We trust in the name of the Lord our God, and all of that is wonderful. We do profess and claim those things today. We don't want to look at the seen. We want to, to know the unseen, that you're with us. But help us in those times that we can't, or we don't have the bandwidth, or we don't feel like we can open ourselves to those truths. 
Help us to be able to be honest with you, to have the courage to know that you're not going anywhere, that no matter what, you're with us, no matter what, you love us and cherish us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this unbelievable, undeniable gift. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.